uh, thanks for being here. Uh, I'm just going to hit you with it. Broad-based question. Uh, I know you, you still take this very personally because you still call the officers your officers. The LAPD is taking broadside shots daily, almost daily. You've got Mark Furman. He's being called a racist rogue cop who never should have been hired by the LAPD. The crime lab is being accused of sloppy work, out of control. The public is left with the image that things at the LAPD are just totally screwed up. And Chief, there are a lot of people who want to ask you, why and how did things get to be so bad? Well, I don't think the p things are, are bad at all. I, I think we've got one individual who held thoughts that uh, no one knew about. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it says a great deal about the discipline in the Los Angeles Police Department because I've talked to a lot of people. I didn't know Mark Furman when he was on the job. I've talked to a lot of people who knew him intimately, who worked in radio cars with him, who played baseball with him, who drank beer with him off-duty, and they're shocked. They said, that's not Mark Furman we knew at all. So uh, I think it shows that uh, while he held these thoughts, uh, and they're terrible, terrible thoughts, um, there's no indication that he, that he used any of this uh, while he was on the job. Uh, and there's no indication that uh, any of this came out uh, when he was a detective investigating this particular homicide. And as far as, as uh, the crime lab is concerned, I think they've held up quite well under a broadside by some of the best attorneys in the United States. Um, except for Al, uh, and uh, except for one uh, or two, uh, I think they've done very well. But I think what that also says is a, a city that has not done its job in providing to the police department and its crime lab the kind of staffing that it needs, the kind of pay level it needs. Every, every good criminalist that we've had, except those that love LAPD, have left us to go to the county, go to the state, because they make more money. The instrumentation at LAPD has always been poor because the city council won't come across with a few bucks in order to provide that instrumentation. So uh, I think you can, you can blame not just LAPD. I think LAPD has done a marvelous job with what they have been given to do the job with. So what you're saying is that you can't paint the whole LAPD with this broad brush because of a few bad apples. And you shouldn't. But, well, but the problem, you see, is that there are folks out there in the community who don't believe there are just a few bad apples. Now, I'm sitting next to a former police sergeant, a former chief of police. I am uh, I may be in danger of being attacked here verbally. <laughs> we got rid of Al because he became a lawyer. <laughs> uh, I don't have but, but, but what do you do to convince those people? What do you do to convince those people that it is just a few bad apples. Well, you know, I think the daily contacts that police, uh, police officers make with people uh, tell them otherwise. Uh, I think uh, people generally who have a relationship with the police in any way, even the negative relationships, can tell you that's not true. What they hear, a lot of this, they hear. They hear it in the media and they hear it from others. Gee, they're terrible. But if you have a crime report taken from a police officer, by a police officer, you've given a ticket by a police officer, most of the contacts are very positive. And uh, to dramatize that are the number of commendations that just keep flowing in. They're far greater than the complaints that we receive. And if you look at the, uh, any of the polls recently, LAPD has been very high in those polls. So I think the general public... Uh, supports the police and believes that they do a good job. Okay, another hot topic, Chief, uh, is uh, current Chief Willie Williams, and we're going to talk about that. I'll shut up and let Al ask some questions right after this break. Please stay with us. And we're back with uh, former Police Chief Daryl Gates and KTLA legal analyst, criminal defense attorney Al DeBlanc. We've got about three minutes left, Al, so go ahead, ask your questions. I don't well, want to... Chief, some people repeatedly say that the police department needs to work on its image. Well, image means one thing. Is there a need for real change as opposed to image? And what about the Christopher Commission report? Some say it's just been sitting on the table, no action. Other provisions in it perhaps should be acted upon. What do you think about this? Well, Al, you know, the Christopher Commission, I, I'm not very uh, endeared to the recommendations. I think most of the recommendations they made uh, were things we already did. If you looked at uh, what what we uh, put in, implemented uh, right after Chris, Christopher Commission came out with a recommendation. We implemented about 90% of those recommendations. There were a few things that are still left. It costs money. City Council has never come up with the money. And they continually blame. Uh, they blame the poor chief. They blame others for not implementing these things. It, it, the, belong, the blame belongs right with the political leadership of the city. 
for not providing uh, those kinds of things that are necessary to implement the, the, it, those things that are left. It's a nagging and persistent problem. The department is constantly taking heat. I think Ron Olson pointed it out. Uh, what can Willie Williams do to get out from under what seems to be a persistent, nagging problem for the department? This constantly being attacked for many, many things, and we don't have enough time to really go over all of yeah, that. What can Willie do? And I think, Al, uh, that Willie has put himself in a position where I don't think he can uh, work himself out of it. Uh, suing the city was the, the last bad judgment act on his part. I, 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 I hate to say it, but I think Willie Williams ought to go back to Philadelphia. We need a new start new chief um, and um, I don't think we can I don't think he can get out of this at all I really it, don't is it possible in your opinion chief for someone to come to Los Angeles because we we're so big and we're so diverse here uh, to come from another part of the country and hope to understand this place over over the short term I don't think you can bring anybody from the east uh, with the eastern mentality I think there's a different mentality in law enforcement in the east than there is here in, in Los Angeles uh, uh, I think uh, accepting things in Las Vegas and uh, the Eastern mentality wouldn't mean anything. But here, where we've had 45 years of integrity and honesty, we believe in that in the Los Angeles Police Department. We believe in the truth, uh, even though some don't give it. Uh, we believe in it. And when the chief doesn't provide the, the truth and he accepts things in Las Vegas, then uh, you, you've got a different situation than we've ever had before. And if, even all the things they used to say about me, and they said a lot of things, and about Ed Davis and about Parker, never was the question of integrity, honesty ever raised on any of us. And you know that it would have been raised by uh, detractors if they had anything to go on. Very quickly, we're almost out of time. Is community-based policing making a difference? Well, you know, you can go back to William A. Wharton. You mentioned him before, generally brought in. He talked about courtesy, courtesy, courtesy. He had signs all over the police department, courtesy, courtesy, courtesy. What community-based policing is, 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 is serving the public, being, being good to the public. That's what community-based policing is all about. Now, we've got all these different programs, and actually, if you look at the programs, they touch about 1% of the population. The, what the people want, good service. They want it quickly. When they ask for the police, they want them there. Uh, and they want courteous service, and they want good service. That's what they want. Okay, Daryl Gates, thank you so much for being here. Nice talking to you. That's it for the new news. Please be sure to join Hal Fishman for all the day's late-breaking events tonight on News at 10. Our live coverage of the Simpson trial resumes right after this.